information now as the number of people killed by coronavirus continues to rise. At 170 this morning, nearly 200 Americans are in quarantine after being evacuated from Wuhan, China. They will undergo three days of voluntary testing for signs of the coronavirus before they can be released. Right now, there are almost 8,000 confirmed cases of the illness. The World Health Organization says they're reconsidering whether to declare a public health emergency because of growing concerns about human-to-human -human transmission and the rapid acceleration of confirmed cases. So far, there have been just five confirmed cases of the virus in the U.S., but more could be infected. The symptoms of coronavirus are similar to the flu. Here to tell us more about those symptoms and how to keep an eye on them is Dr. Mandira Mera from SSM Health. Good morning. Good morning. Are you guys staying happy and healthy this season? Trying to. Yeah, we're trying, <laughs> yeah. but the concern here is more about the flu, but it is interesting that the symptoms are quite similar. Exactly, and how quickly something can become a problem that's over there, you know, abroad in China, and all of a sudden can be a problem here. You know, we talk about maybe five cases that are confirmed in the U.S., but those five people have encountered hundreds of people, close family members, friends, those kinds of things. And you can imagine if just a few of those people pass it on to a few more people that also then become in contact with a thousand people, it's very hard to quarantine and limit and constrict this. So that's the reason that the WHO is really thinking, do we need to declare this an international public emergency? The symptoms that you mentioned are true. Look at that beautiful virus. It's actually a beautiful virus under the microscope, and it's called corona because it looks like a crown. Mm -hmm. uh, the symptoms that you want to look for, very similar to the common cold or flu, coughing, runny nose, uh, sneezing, possible headache. Uh, certain people it can, can become more complicated. You're talking about a lower respiratory, bronchitis, or pneumonia-type symptoms. Now, the difference here is, of course, travel, or if you've been exposed to someone that maybe has gone to mainland China. That's going to be your first warning sign that we need to talk to a, a doctor, we need to tell your healthcare professional immediately that this is something I'm concerned about, and limiting, of course, your exposure then to other people. In this case, uh, the most common question we're getting right now is, is this more deadly? Is this more contagious? And what kind of prevention can we be doing? The scary thing here is, is we don't have any treatments and we don't have any prevention. And so what I mean by that is every year we talk about influenza and getting your vaccine. We do not have a vaccine for the coronavirus. We do not have any treatments. And that's what makes this a little bit scary is even though most cases are self-limiting, most cases will improve, we don't have treatments for the people that do end up severe. Right now the estimates are that about 20% of the cases will be severe and about 2% are deadly. Hmm. Comparing that to influenza, we're 0.1% are deadly. Hmm. So we're talking about a 20, almost a 20 times more likelihood of it being deadly. So things we can do here, we always talk about healthy hand hygiene, hand washing, avoiding touching your eyes, nose, mouth. If you know someone that is sick, whether it could be coronavirus or not, really avoiding that direct contact, something as simple as a handshake, a sneeze, a cough in close proximity, about three feet can cause that transmission. Here's another case where I know animals are a human's best friend, but again, we suspect just like SARS and MERS, that this was transmissible again through animals. So we really want to limit our contact. If you can, wear masks if you're around someone that you think may have this and letting your doctor know immediately if you suspect that you could have the coronavirus. Wow, just fascinating. And it's going to continue to dominate headlines. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mara, thank you very much. Yeah, great to be here. Coming up.